Hey everyone, Stephen Jonathan here, and today we are going to explain why we call ourselves City of Truth. The name of our apostolate is a derivative of the theme found in the masterpiece, City of God, written by my patron saint, St. Augustine. St. Augustine wrote the City of God as a defense of Christianity in ancient Rome when it fell. This profound work of literature has come to us from across the ages by its enduring excellence. Although City of God contains countless treasures, perhaps the most valuable theme is contained in the title. Let me explain. In Book 14, Chapter 28, Augustine writes of the nature of the two cities, the earthly and the heavenly, and he explains, Accordingly, two cities have been formed by two loves, the earthly by the love of self, even to the contempt of God, the heavenly by the love of God, even to the contempt of self. The most vital rediscovery we can make here is to relearn that what we love forms our character. What we love as a community forms the nature of our cities. Augustine reveals to us that when it comes to what we love the most, we only have two real choices. We will either love God or ourselves the most, but we can't love both equally. In fact, we will most certainly have contempt for one of them. If we love ourselves and put ourselves first and judge by our own subjective lights, we will have contempt for God. If we love God and put our Creator first and judge by the light of truth, we will have contempt for our fallen selves and even for our own subjective lights. To further drive the point home, we can discover the radical difference between what cities and citizenship these two kinds of love form. The city of God conforms to the image of heaven as it celebrates the culture of life and as it seeks after objective truth, cultivates the virtue in accord with the objective moral good, and recognizes Christ the true King. In the city of man, it is as contrary as it can be. It conforms to the image of hell as it celebrates the culture of war and death. It promotes materialism, subjectivism, and relativism. It makes arbitrary laws while rejecting the objective moral standard. Truly, the Prince of Darkness rules this city. Our conditioning may prevent us from perceiving this stark reality, but imagine a soul from 500 years ago watching our nightly news. St. Augustine's brilliant theme in the City of God is not really his. He was just re-articulating the oldest theme in the cosmos. He was expressing a reality older than time. God made the universe out of love, and a proper understanding of this most basic reality would yield the conclusion that the creator of the universe is more worthy of love than the creation, just as an artist is more worthy of love than his paintings. The original two cities were formed in the heavens when Lucifer caught a glimpse of his own brilliance and chose to love himself to the contempt of God. His pride and his I will not serve comprise the archetype for the self-love that forms the city of man. The first time we see these two loves form two cities is in the Garden of Eden when the serpent convinces Eve to eat the forbidden fruit. And our first parents are expelled into the city of man. Ever since then, the two loves have formed two cities in all ages and in all places. Think of Cain and Abel, or Noah and the rest of the world, or Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. These two loves forming two cities has been played out from the ancient Greeks, Hebrews, Christians, and Romans up through the Middle Ages and into the present age. Perhaps the most recent rendition of this truth is seen in St. Pope John Paul II's Evangelium Vitae, where we learn of the culture of life and the culture of death. These are the perfect analogs to the city of God and the city of man. From all the examples throughout history, we can discover that citizens in the city of God are true theologians, true philosophers, saints, and those who work for the sake of the common good, while citizens in the city of man are generally self-referencing sophists who reject objective truth and goodness as they work to make a name for themselves.
There are many other ways to characterize the two kinds of citizens, and we would be wise to be aware of them. The city of God and the city of man concept is an either or universal condition of all human souls, meaning we must choose our citizenship. A key factor in cultivating citizenship in either city is education. Here at the City of Truth, we have taken St. Augustine's profound image and by analogy applied it to education. Although we call it City of Truth and we compare it to the City of Man, we might just as well call it the School of Truth and assert that it is the education in the City of God, while the education in the City of Man could be called the School of Man. Either way, it works. We use this analogical relationship to assert our most important educational principle that we are to love truth to the contempt of our own opinions. The school of man teaches its students to love their own opinions to the contempt of truth. In fact, the school of man hates and denigrates the truth and goodness with a contempt and antagonism that is downright pathological. Our work at City of Truth is to cultivate just the opposite. Although we do participate in the City of Truth and in the City of Man every day, we cannot hold these authorities in equal esteem. In Matthew 6, 24, Jesus tells us, No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. This explains why we must choose which love we elevate as authoritative. And it will either be God or ourselves. It's important to note that anything we elevate above God, like money or status, is the same thing as choosing the self. Perhaps the greatest danger we face today concerning these two cities is that by our conditioning, we are taught to believe that we can hybridize them and have the best of both worlds. We may be falsely convinced that we can love God and ourselves in equal measure. This apparent good choice is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Although it is a blasphemy to the self-love and self-worship movements, it is the first requirement of citizenship in the city of truth to love truth and wisdom and to have contempt for our own opinions. Now is a good time to ask and answer the question, whom do you serve? If you choose our Creator and truth above all else and discover that it is ordained that we cooperate with nature and grace to conform our souls to reality, then not only are you seeking citizenship in the city of truth, but together we will come to know the truth and that truth will make us free. Until next time.